Well, hey there, and welcome back to Heimler's History. Now, over the course of the last couple of videos, we've been talking about Unit 1 of the AP government curriculum, namely the concept of federalism. We've gone through the Constitution and some Supreme Court cases to see how federalism works, but in this video, let's talk about some current examples of federalism in action. So, if you're ready to get them brain cows milked, well then let's get to it. So here's what we're trying to do in this video. Explain how the distribution of powers among the three federal branches and between the national and state governments impacts policymaking. So the first thing to mention is that because federalism divides power between federal and state state and local governments, that means that there are more access points for stakeholders to influence policy outcomes. Remember, stakeholders are folks like you and me who are affected by the outcome of legislation. And because federalism divides power this way, we have a lot more places where we can get involved in those outcomes. But national policy is also constrained by the sharing of power, and for that let me give you two current examples, environmental regulations and the legalization of marijuana. Well, that should be spicy. Okay, so first, federalism is illustrated by environmental regulation. In 2015, President Obama led the United States into an international accord called the Paris Agreement. And lots of leaders around the world were deeply concerned about climate change and melting ice caps and rising ocean levels and the heating up of the earth, which would eventually leave us all looking like a bunch of old monkeys' kneecaps. Now, in order to enter a treaty like this, it would normally be by the approval of the Senate, because that power is given to them in the Constitution. But the Senate was a majority Republican, and, well, to put it mildly, they were not big fans of this agreement. So Obama entered the agreement by executive order, and how he did that is beyond the scope of what we're talking about here. Just know that that's how it was done. Anyway, when the United States became a member nation of the Paris Agreement, that meant that all sorts of new environmental regulations were imposed on the states. And so all 50 states were required to submit to these regulations and reduce their carbon emissions. However, when Donald Trump won the presidency, he pledged to remove the U.S. from the Paris Agreement, which he did. But what's interesting is that some states decided to keep the regulations imposed by the Paris Agreement, case in point, California. So that means that if you own a factory in California and you want to emit greenhouse gases, you have to abide by the much stricter state limits rather than the looser federal limits. Anyway, just in case you were wondering, when Joe Biden was elected president, he went ahead and got us back into the Paris Agreement, so this very much has to do with the political ideology of the president. Okay, now another example of federalism in action is the legalization of marijuana, the old wacky tobacco. And here's where I tell you that under the heading of federalism, we often talk about states as laboratories for democracy. And what that means is that states States will pass certain laws and then representatives in the federal government and then other states will see how it goes within that state in order to determine if that's a law that needs to be passed nationally. And the legalization of marijuana is very much an example of the laboratory of democracy concept. So marijuana has been illegal federally since the end of the 1930s, but the crackdown really came during President Richard Nixon's war on drugs. In 1970, Congress passed the Controlled Substances Act, which stipulated severe punishments for possession and use of marijuana. Now, by the time the 80s and 90s came around, there was a growing body of research showing that marijuana could be used as a therapeutic in certain medical cases, and so in 1996, California voted to legalize medical marijuana, and they did so by a statewide vote. And after that, several states followed suit, and that brings us to 2012, when Colorado legalized recreational marijuana. But here's the weird thing. In 2012, possession of marijuana was still a federal crime. Like, nothing had changed on the federal level, but if you were a Colorado resident, you could now go down to your local marijuana shop and legally break the federal law, to which I say, what? Like, to possess marijuana was legal in Colorado, but illegal in the United States. How does that work? Well, remember the role of the president. The president is the executive of the federal government, which is to say the president enforces the laws. Obama agreed with the legalization of marijuana, and so he basically just said, yes, it's illegal, but I'm not going to be devoting any federal resources to enforcing those laws in Colorado. So, again, we see here federalism in action. And Colorado has very much been a laboratory for democracy here. The federal government and other states are close watching how this whole thing plays out in this state to see whether this would be a good national policy. And ever since Colorado and Washington legalized recreational marijuana, 18 more states have followed suit. Okay, thanks for watching. Review packet right here for AP Government, which is going to help you get an A in your class and a 5 on your exam in Maine. If you want me to keep making these videos, then by all means subscribe, and I shall oblige. For more videos on Unit 1, here's a playlist right here. Heimler out.